we zeroed our vise and we trammed our head in. We put the part in there with the flashlight. I was looking underneath and uh, gauging uh, parallels, uh, parallelism with the table and the vise. And I'm anchoring that down. The keyway is only four and a half inches long, so you know, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it well within a couple thousand. You know, I mean, we're not, we know we're not gonna have a deep taper, or this or that. In fact, I'm gonna run the indicator across the top of the shaft just to make sure that we are in line and the whole bit. But what I'm what I'm getting at right now, so that I can move the table around and everything else, we have all that weight over there now. I can move the gantry around and I can help support it, and I can run that back and forth, and it still has a little bit of idiosyncrasies in it. In it. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and we have most of the table is over here, and that's the short end of the table. When we bring it over this way, it'll be even more. But we're going to go ahead and throw the other shaft up here, both parts. And we're just going to lay them in the B slot right here up at the end to duplicate that weight. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and get another slug and just kind of like lay it on here um, so that we're going to simulate pretty much the amount of weight that's out here. This is overhanging a little bit here but we got we got a lot of table that's going to be going that way as well and if you have, you know, the, the mill will handle that weight you just need to equalize it and then your carriage and stuff will turn nice and easy and that's what you want you want to be able to you know so it glides in fact that almost might be enough but I want to I want to add just a little bit more set that on there and then we'll add this on here you know oh yeah much nicer okay all right let's go ahead and run the indicator across here now like I said I would towards the end of our end, uh, towards the end of the part. Now we're going to touch it and then we're just going to continue feeding and coming across, coming across until we get five eighths of an inch of width there. Just touching. And 
I guess I'm taking oh about five thousands at a time across there. Don't take that for exact and don't count how many passes I'm going here because I'm, I just got the feel on the handle. In fact, my dial isn't even locked, so it's not 100% true anyway. But I do know that, it, you know, just you want to take a little bit at a time. The key about to looking at it, you'll know that this is 5 eighths wide, so this would be 5 eighths long. Well, we're not yet. That's half inch, half inch by 5 eighths, so we need to go a little bit more. What I used to do when I was doing shafting a lot, I don't, ha I didn't take notes. I just had it in my head a lot on the common ones. But you'll know what diameter and what key weigh and about how much to actually feed down. But to uh, calculate, actually, that's about 550. You can almost gauge it when you first start because you can see how much more you're actually taking off of the part on each side when it first starts. Very close. Close enough to call that in. Okay, then I go ahead and I grab like a neutral position and I put two of the flutes straight across in line. And then I crank it across until this one on this side and that one on that side are perfectly lined up. Then I lock the table in and out. And I also lock it, or I actually snug it or make sure that my knee is snug. Uh, because that, you, you also want to double check after you do that because depending on how sloppy your knee is, you may actually have to crank it out or in to compensate for that play because when you loosen up your knee if it's real loose you'll you'll hang out you know same thing on the bridge board if you got a really slow i'm talking about really sloppy old machines all right i'm happy with that and i call it that's zero as far as side to side that's also zero as far as depth from here you go ahead and set your dial at zero and our crank depth now is from that zero so you by doing this, you've zeroed in side to side, and you've zeroed in for the start of your depth. Okay, now you can do two things. You can lower it down, bring it back, and then raise it back up, and be on there. Or you can fire it off, feed straight off the end of the shaft there, and then just crank it in. It doesn't matter either way. So I just fed it off the end of the thing. Now we are going to use coolant on this. And we're going to cut this in one pan. Hold depth. The reason why I do that on end mills is because end mills will naturally, and I usually like four or two flutes not four flutes, but in the 5 eighths width, I'm limited on what I have in supply. But I'm going to go ahead and crank it down now. We want 5 sixteenths. per minute. It's not extremely fast. And here we go.
Well, I did have a problem, and uh, this is something you got to be careful of too. The uh, the end mill uh, actually sucked down, um, and that's kind of you know uh, just it, it's not detrimental because it's actually a little deeper over on this side here than it is here, so it'll never it'll never drag out. But I do have to go ahead and make a, a custom key for it, and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm cutting a piece out in the uh, Enco saw, and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, deburring this edge here and start prepping out. Uh, this part here to get ready to accept the uh, the new key and then this job is done. Well, it was almost flawless. We had a little bit of taper into the, the key, but I made a ramp key to fit in here. And, uh, you know, it's at least that way too, it'll, it'll never It'll never slide out or vibration or whatever. So it has that little imperfection, but it has so many great uh, things that actually, you know, was accomplished to get uh, finished radiuses for strength and uh, the heat treat and the welding and, and uh, you know, there's there's a lot of other things that could have went wrong that were would be detrimental to the project. Um, also, too, you probably noticed I hadn't changed my... Uh, my stamp so this actually says 12 on it but I gotta I gotta dig out my uh, stamp uh, and change out the three with the two there and and uh, so <laughs> I know that that's gonna come up in the comments there um, very happy to actually be able to take this flange and uh, kind of reverse machining uh, you know usually uh, you, you don't you don't have something that's that's a finished product that you can weld uh, back into uh, uh, other components and and get it to run true but uh, it's just the way you go about it uh, and also too it would uh, it, it it surprised me um, to a certain amount that I was able to turn it weld it put it back in the machine a couple thousands <laughs> hey you know get her done <laughs>